Sir George Martin. What an incredible guy to work with. What an honor that was. That uh, you know, all you need is Beatles tour. I remember I made the mistake after the first show at the Opera House because it was so emotional, especially for Glenn Shorick and I, because you know Glenn's the biggest Beatles fan in the world, and for, to do Penny Lane and Hey Jude and you know and then, and Across the Universe and all those songs, it was the most emotional feeling, and we'd come off from crying, you know. Glenn and I look at each other and go, because oh! you know, we were just hopeless. It was just so good, and so nice to be around this guy. But I remember we went, we went back to his room and he, he mixed up these martinis in these huge big jugs and, and you know, the, um, squeezed the, uh, the lemon rind and everything just for the flavour and everything. And I, I, I had one and then and he made me another one and I made the mistake of, of having it. By the time I got back to the Siebel townhouse and knocked on the door, my wife opened the door and I said, Hello darling, how are you going? We're going to have a great show. You know, it's like too strong, too strong. When I think of Tommy, I just think of energy. He's just so energetic um, and, and full of life, you know. He's, um, he's a real inspiration for somebody who just embraces life. Hi everyone, I'm Keith Urban and you're watching Tommy Emmanuel True Stories right here on Music Country. Hi, this is Phil Emanuel. Welcome back to more Tommy Emanuel's True Stories on Music Country. Well, my first meeting with Tommy was actually at a festival here and um, we were playing with the Blue Heeler Band and I sat side of stage watching him play and then he came off all sweaty and the guitar was all over the shop and I first got a chance to say day. and I, I actually got to admit I was a little bit speechless because I, about three years prior to that I joined the Tommy Emanuel Appreciation Club, which was a